Okay, now we're going to take a look at DuPont analysis. And DuPont analysis is a way to understand uh, return on equity in its component pieces. Now, we, we'll recall that return on equity is net income divided by total equity. And what the DuPont framework has given us is a way to understand a couple of the levers uh, inside uh, return on equity. So um, the DuPont framework um, suggests that uh, return on equity is a function of profitability, efficiency, and leverage. And uh, the profitability measure that they use is net income on sales. And the efficiency measure that they use is sales uh, as a proportion of total assets. And the leverage uh, metric that they use is assets over equity. And what you'll notice here is when you multiply these uh, fractions together, uh, you can, of course, cancel out um, uh, sales uh, in the numerator with sales in the denominator and the same uh, with assets in the numerator and denominator. And what you're left with is um, net income over equity, which we would recognize as return on equity. So this is a clever way, I think, of uh, breaking return on equity into three pieces um, so we can understand uh, changes and differences uh, when we examine return on equity either over time or relative to um, peer organizations. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, this is Hasbro's return on equity. Um, they, in 2018, Hasbro's return on equity was 12.6%. And we can see that Hasbro's return on equity was toward the bottom part, uh, bottom end of their industry. And we would ask ourselves, we would wonder, why is this? Why is their uh, return on equity only 12% when Spin Master is uh, almost twice that, that and Lego is significantly more than twice that. Um, similarly, we can see that Hasbro's return on equity has declined significantly um, in the last several years. And the questions an analyst would have is what's driving that decline? And uh, the DuPont uh, framework uh, can help us answer these questions. So let's do that right now. In order to um, get the data that we need, uh, we need to look at both the income statement and the balance sheet. Uh, so here is the 2018 income statement and balance sheet for Hasbro. Uh, we need net revenues and net earnings from the income statement. That's 4.579 billion in net revenues and 220 million in net earnings. Um, and then we need uh, assets and shareholders equity from the balance sheet, 5.26 billion in assets and 1.75 billion in shareholders equity. Now we have all the data that we need, we can proceed to the DuPont equation. So when we plug the data into the DuPont framework, uh, net income over sales, sales over assets, and assets over equity, we get the following values for the last three years. And you can see that in 2016, in terms of a profitability metric, net income over sales, um, which we also call our net margin ratio, and it was 11% back in 2016, but it's dropped to 7.6 and then again to 4.8. Now efficiency, in terms of how many sales do you get for every dollar of assets, was uh, 0.99 in 2016, was the same in 2017, but dropped off again in 2018 to 0.87. Now leverage, on the other hand, has gone the other direction. They've increased leverage over time in terms of assets over equity. So uh, it was 2.7, uh, then 2.9, and now 3. So we can say that the decrease in return on equity from 2016 to 2018 is largely a function of declining profitability and lower efficiency. And we know that the profitability declined in each year while the efficiency increased, um, uh, uh, decreased in uh, just the most recent year, uh, and that has all been offset by a slight increase in leverage. Now let's compare Hasbro using the DuPont analysis with its peers. While we have Hasbro at the bottom, we've put slotted in Lego and Spin Master here above that. These All these figures are relative to 20, uh, uh, 2018 results. Um, and so when we're asking the question, why is Hasbro a lower return on equity than, let's say, Spin Master, that's almost twice their equity, we can see that Spin Master has also almost twice their profitability and is significantly more efficient, although they use uh, about half the leverage that uh, Spin that Hasbro does. So because of uh, 
increased profitability and efficiency, um, Spin Master uh, it generates a higher return on equity. And uh, similarly, we can compare Hasbro to Lego and realize that there's a significant difference in profitability between these two firms and a significant difference in uh, efficiency, uh, although not as much as with Spin Master. Um, uh, and also Hasbro uh, going the other way, Hasbro is using significantly more leverage um, than is Lego. So the, you can see in, uh, it's, it's quite easy then to uh, pinpoint the issues of why Hasbro has a lower return on equity than very similar companies in its industry. So where do we go from here? Now we know what the issues are. Well, if we have an issue with profitability, then we would want to learn more about that by using profitability ratios. We'd want to look at gross margin, operating margin, net margin. We could look at a common size income statement to get uh, insight into what's happening. If the problem is in efficiency, we would want to look at all of our efficiency ratios, day sales outstanding, days payable outstanding, look at inventory turns, calculate your cash conversion, and a common size balance sheet would be very helpful to diagnose what's happening in efficiency. And likewise, if the problem is in leverage, we would want to look at all of our leverage and liquidity ratios, the debt ratio, interest coverage, and a common size balance sheet would be helpful in this one as well. So those are your next steps and ways to go. And I think, uh, I hope you agree that the DuPont framework is a nice way uh, to structure our analysis of a company.